My makeup is I'm Irish, Scottish, Native American, Italian, and Chinese. Duh. Come on, hey, hey, you want to go to the beach, grab a couple of toys, strap Dada in the car, see, like, <laughs> he's talking about killing his baby yeah. mama and dropping her off at the beach with his daughter. It was more like me just kind of, like, falling back and, like, going into, like, a little depression and just, mm. you know, resorting to things that I shouldn't have resorted to and just, yeah, yeah, ended up going down, getting into a really dark place. <laughs> We're ready. Action. Hi, so today I'm here with Derek Liu. What's up? How you guys doing? <laughs> so you were born in, is it California? Here? Yeah, yeah, born and raised. Yep, right out in Santa Clarita, actually. It's like, it's like a 45 minute drive from here, but yeah, I don't, I don't mind the commute. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. But I think you're also like mixed, right? You're Eurasian also? Yeah, I have. All right, so everybody asks, so they might, this is like the exclusive on, like, what, my, <laughs> yeah. on what my mix is. So my makeup is, I'm Irish, Scottish, Native American, Italian, and Chinese. Damn. Yeah. So what is your dad? My dad From is the, uh, he's Irish, Italian, and Chinese. And then my mom is Irish, Irish Scottish, and Native American. Oh, yeah. Damn. That's kind of an interesting mix with like Chinese. Like your grandparents are like went overseas or Yeah, um so we're not sure like about about my dad's side, but I know that my mom I know we just know that his my grandparents on my dad's side are Irish Italian and then Chinese so yeah. he's half Chinese and then it makes me a quarter Chinese yeah and then my mom on her side is Irish Scottish and Native American Damn. yeah where is Lou from then Lou is Mandarin oh, okay yeah that's probably where the Chinese yeah, yeah came yeah. in yeah so how were you like like growing up I was a wild child I was like I was, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was a bad kid. <laughs> I, I would get in a lot of trouble. I just had, like, a lot of energy, mm -hmm. and I just really, like, you know, I like to be center stage. Like, I, you know, I'm an entertainer yeah. now. I like to be up on stage. I like to be in front of the camera. So as a kid, it's like I like detention. I like to be, you know, the mm -hmm. class clown, or I like to, like, I don't know if I was, you know, they say, like, in therapy, they're like, oh, your kid's getting in trouble because he needs attention from you. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he's doing yeah. it. He's acting because he wants some love from you or whatever it is. So... Yeah, I was just wild. I was just getting in trouble, super active, a lot of sports, yeah. um, a lot of injuries, you know what I'm saying? Climbing yeah. on trees, jumping on, off of wow. trees, you know, breaking bones, all that. Just crazy child. What sports did you do? I did baseball, soccer, football, and golf. Damn. But <laughs> that was like all, you know, just mixed in. But competitively throughout like my whole, you know, High school, I played football, and then up until high school, from like when I was five, I played t-ball and mm -hmm. baseball. And then when I was eight, they finally let me play football. They were like, my mom was like, I played flag for the longest. I'm like, mom, I want to hit somebody. Like, let me yeah. tackle someone. Like, I need to put the helmet on. I want to strap up and crack heads. Like, come on, mom. Oh my God. And you know her. She's like, no, my little baby, I can't. I can't let you go out there and get hurt. Yeah. Um, but well, after she saw that I was just like, that was like how I got to release some of my aggression mm -hmm. and like I was getting in less trouble because I was like going oh. and tackling people and shit. So she's like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Keep yeah. them out there. You want to take them home with you? Like, <laughs> wow. Well, what are your parents like personalities like? Are they also like really outgoing? <laughs> my, yeah, they're both very outgoing. My mom is like one of the smartest people you'll ever meet. She's Damn. super intelligent and she's super like... She's very loving, very caring, but she's also like super, she's like a hard ass, you know? So mm -hmm. she like holds, holds us to a high standard, which is, I mean, that's a good thing as a parent, you know? Yeah. Like you want to be like, you don't want to be your kid's friend, you know what I'm saying? Like you want to mm -hmm. be their parent, you know? Yeah. Um, and so that's where my mom like excels at. She's super loving, caring with the perfect mix of like, you know what I'm saying? Like, get down out there, I'll whoop your ass. Like, if you're in trouble, I'm going to whoop your ass at, in school. And then my dad is just like me, just super outgoing, carefree, yeah. loud, like, just all over the place, yeah. a lot of energy. So, yeah, I, I, I got, like, the perfect mix. Mm -hmm. I'm literally the perfect mix of my, <laughs> my, my parents. What are their careers in? Um, so my mom is in sales. She's done sales, like, her whole life. And then my father owns his own company, Cosmic Sales, and he was he does, like, he breaks down refurbishing computers and everything, oh. so he's owned that for, he's done that for a, a long time, for the yeah. long, like, since I, before I was born. Yeah. Where do you get your musical sense from? Uh, my musical sense, actually, on my mom's side, m my great-grandparents 
owned a radio station in Mississippi. Wow. And so they were like, they, you know, I, I believe, I, I, I could be, I could be wrong, I could be my facts wrong, <laughs> but I believe they were the first radio station to play, like, black music back oh. then. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, I, I think that's a little, like, you know, a little nugget, a little history yeah. fact. But, um, yeah, so I believe that's where I get, like, my musical sense of just, like, having good taste in music. And, right. Like, because my, you know, my parents are both artistic, like, mm-hmm. talented, whether it's, like, creative. But I don't know where, like, the music side came in. And so yeah. I'm just... And, oh, well, actually, my uncle is, like, nice. He used to be in a band. He used to play oh, guitar, drums, all yeah. that. So that's... The, did you hang tripping. around him? What's up? Did you hang around him and, like, did he... Oh, yeah, that was... Yeah. That's, like, my guy. That he's... Oh, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, he would definitely... He showed me... He's actually the first one to show me Jay-Z, oh. Biggie, Beastie Boys, wow. Slim Shady. When I was 10 years old... He was the one who bought me my first Slim Shady LP. Like, I'm sorry, Mom. I got the explicit one. And I'm <laughs> oh in there. I, I'm 10 years old, and he's rapping about, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. come on, hey, hey, you want to go to the beach, grab a couple of toys, strap Dada in the car seat? Like, he's talking about killing his baby yeah. mama and dropping her off at the beach with his daughter. And I didn't know what he was talking about, but I just loved the flow, and I loved his, like, yeah. animation and how animated he was. And that's, like, where I fell in love with rap. Yeah. What did your parents listen to then? Like oh, the my, my mom was is everything. She had from bumping in the car TLC to Shania Twain to um, she had some Tupac. And then my dad was like, he was like, he's in love with like the dancey, like 980s music, like uh, Sticks, Ario Speedwagon, yeah. like, you know, uh, I forgot the name, but it's like songs like, you dropped the bomb on me, <laughs> baby. So I'm like listening to all sorts of shit. I get, I have all sorts of different type of musical, like, influences back in the day. Yeah. So you weren't into school at all, right? Or did you have, like, favorite subjects? Um, I love, actually, my favorite thing is history. Oh. I like history because, yeah. um, I mean... I'm good. I, I was good at everything, like math, English. Oh. I never struggled at anything. Yeah. But it was just history had my full attention because nothing changes. Hmm. If a date is the same and a yeah. person is the same, if in 1901 George Washington did this and did that, it's that's the same. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. on the test or whatever it is, it's like oh. that's history. You yeah. know, like it's concrete details. This is what happened. Mm-hmm. But, like, with math, you have variables that change this and that. And it's, like, how did Y become negative when it's, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. it was, like, history to me was just so interesting. And on top of that, I mean, nowadays, I mean, I guess history is, like, being, like, re, like, you know, mm-hmm. how they, everybody's yeah. saying, like, history is kind of being covered up and whatever it is. But I always thought, like, history is, was cool to me because it was what happened back in the day. You yeah. Know? It was, like, a, a re, re-account of, like, what went on you know mm-hmm. when we weren't there so i just thought that was really cool yeah that was my favorite <laughs> did you start off singing or did you play any instruments early on um i used to play pots and pans like i used to bang <laughs> pots and pans um no no so instruments. it was mostly I, just like singing yeah it was beginning. mostly yeah mostly singing singing along you know rap into your favorite yeah. verse and getting it word for word mm-hmm. and like hitting the different type of like you know accents that they have with it or whatever it is um yeah, no, no, no instruments. Were just singing. Yeah, were your friends also into rapping as well? Did you like have a community, or was it just kind of by yourself that you like developed these skills? Um, it was kind of just by myself. I was always interested in it, and then um, I remember I bought. I was like my senior year, junior year in high school. I bought, um, I bought a microphone and like a little like monitor and like a little like inbox setup, an interface, and I kind of just started writing my own raps and just trying to figure out you know finding beats on youtube's like you yeah. know like oh this type ty- tiger type beat or like a fucking you know what i'm saying little wayne type beat and we try <laughs> and rap over it and just make like whatever i thought was cool at that time yeah uh, well what age was that so my junior year i was 17 mm-hmm. 16 yeah yeah 16 that was when i first started like i didn't take it seriously though you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying it was more just like uh this is cool. This is yeah. fun. I like to hear my voice back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's more like a hobby. I didn't really take it serious until about 2013, 2012. Mm-hmm. 2012, 2013 was when I like started yeah. taking it serious. So what happened after like graduation? Well, after graduation, I went to 
Santa Barbara City College mm -hmm. and I wanted to play football there and I tried but then I was like you know I just was so consumed by the parties and everything that <laughs> I then didn't get around to playing football mm -hmm. I mean I did I was on the yeah. team but I ended up you know deciding yeah. to just like I'm gonna party instead mm -hmm. so yeah what were you studying like did you choose your major yet or no was kind I of had no side, idea right? yeah, yeah it was one of those like I'm just gonna go to Santa Barbara City College because this is what I'm going to do after, you know, like, yeah. I didn't really have uh, any idea what I wanted to do. And you're strong holding it up like that the whole time. <laughs> it's kind of a workout. She's like, oh my god, I'm getting my arms tired. <laughs> yeah. here. Like, I see for it's been like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. <laughs> Was there like a turning point where music became a bigger and bigger part of your life? Um, yeah, so I... You know, again, I was just kind of messing around with the music, yada, yada, yada. I moved out to, um, never really took it seriously until I moved out to L.A. Like, I coming from Santa Cruz, mm -hmm. I moved out to L.A. And I was, I, I, I met this dude and he was like, yo, I can, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, you got some talent, let me like, you know. This help. was after Kev or? After Kev? Yeah. Yeah, well, this was with Kev. Oh, with Kev. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, while, I was with, while I was with him, um, we kind of, like, started taking music more seriously. I met this dude. He's like, yo, I can, you know what I'm saying, help mentor you and teach you how to, you know what I'm saying, really become an artist. And um, after that, I dropped my first song with Dizzy Wright. And that was, like... That was when I started, like, okay, I saw the reaction. Yeah. People were like, yo, this was dope. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, where'd he come from? And I was like, yeah, yeah I got to, you know, I, this, I love this shit. Mm -hmm. I love the feeling that I get from this. But in, before that, you were actually kind of interested in, like, acting and modeling, right? Correct, yeah. I, um, I was, uh, I, w I had an agent. I was going on auditions. I was doing, you know, kind of like little, you know, commercial here, like a TV show here. And I was really interested in doing acting and modeling. Mm -hmm. At what age was that? That would be, it was like, 20 21 mm -hmm. yeah was, uh, yeah 20 i think i was 20 years old when i first started like doing that taking it seriously and wanting to act and, and doing auditions yeah and has your sister always been a big part of like your career absolutely she's always been there always been supportive always helped me out she's she holds me down like when i start getting a little too you know what i'm saying crazy or whatever <laughs> it is she's always like Yo, she keeps me grounded. She she does my taxes. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, she's, Easy. yeah, and she's like you, yeah, and she's exactly, <laughs> people are like, yo, oh, you're older than her? Like, wait, yeah. what? You're the big brother? Like, no, <laughs> there's no way. I'm out here acting like a kid, and she's got shit, like, on lock. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Do your parents, like, help out as well, or are they kind of, like, just? Um, yeah, no, my parents are very supportive. They yeah. support, like, everything that I do, for sure. Yeah. What would you say have been the key points to where you got to where you are now? I mean, the first, I think what really happened was when I first dropped my first song. I got to give a shout out to Dizzy because, like, that was, mm -hmm. like, a big help. Like, he's yeah. popping, you know what I'm saying? And, like, me being a fan was always, like, wow, holy shit, like, I'm on a song with Dizzy <laughs> right? you know? Um, and then that, that definitely helped, like, kickstart my career. And then going on my first tour, I went on my first tour in Canada with MGK and that was like I was opening for MGK you know just like a little opening act yeah. and it was but it was like great experience you know what I'm saying and I I had a great time and that really helped kickstart the getting in front of people you know what yeah. I'm saying because there's like there's a social media presence and then there's like a presence of like actually being right. able to be in front of people and like people recognizing you or falling in love mm -hmm. with like oh he's dope he can perform he's you know super talented whatever it may be and um so then that, and then I think, I want to say after dropping my, because my first project, LA Confidential, was, it was, it was cool. I was, you know, mm -hmm. first getting into it. Yeah. I didn't really have, didn't really know exactly what I was doing musically. Mm -hmm. But then the second, um, the second project, the second coming, was like my big, you know what I'm saying, where I really kind of made my imprint on music, I feel like. Yeah. And previously, you, you were, like, going over some, like, rough times, like, last year. Can oh. you talk about that a bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, last year, I was, I was dealing with some heavy shit. Like, it was just, it was, uh, yeah, I was going through, I was going through a difficult time, a really dark time. Um, I wasn't happy with myself. I wasn't really, uh, 
I wasn't really focused on my career like I should have been. I was more just into like partying and, you mm -hmm. know, just trying to escape whatever I was going through instead of like dealing with it head on. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. You mean that music career was diff like difficult at that point? Yeah, it was, yeah, it just wasn't, it wasn't going the way I wanted it to. Mm -hmm. And instead of me being like, you know, yeah, I'm going to take this head on and, mm -hmm. you know, attack it and how I need to attack it, it was more like me just kind of like falling back and like going into like a little depression and just, mm -hmm. you know, resorting to things that I shouldn't have resorted to and just... Yeah. Yeah, ended up going down, getting into a really dark place. But um, there was a turning point, and I just saw the light, and it, like, shook me, and it scared yeah. me. And I just woke up, and yeah. I was like, I don't want to be like this anymore. This isn't me. This isn't who I am. I'm, I'm playing a part. I'm playing a role. I'm feeding into this, you know what I'm saying, this, like, this depression that I'm in. And I, I got out of it, yeah. and I'm like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm a year and 87 days sober. Oh, uh, you're <laughs> Yeah, I'm a I year and 87 that. days sober. Yeah. Yep. So what was the turning point that, like, where you were able to get out of it? It was me. It was an event that happened. Yeah. It was an event. Oh, and, okay. and I talk about it in my music, but it yeah. was an event that happened that kind of made me realize, like, holy shit. Like, I, yeah. I need to, this is not me. Like, I mm -hmm. can't be here, you know? This is not who. This is not me. Yeah. And you've done a lot of, like, weed-based interviews. What was the idea behind that? Were you ever, like, afraid? Because, like, a lot of your fan base are, like, younger females. That was funny. I was going to walk by, I got a I know! And I was like, okay, that is the next question. That's the question. Now, that's the next question I'm going to ask. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, like, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say, it, like, an advocate for weed, but mm -hmm. I definitely, like, was in that culture. Mm -hmm. I was in the weed culture, the marijuana culture. Oh, so um, not anymore, or...? Um, no, I don't smoke anymore. I don't mm -hmm. drink. I don't do any oh, of that, wow. you know, and, and mm -hmm. it's not like I'm not sitting here being like, no, don't, don't drink, don't smoke. Yeah. It does. It's your life. I want you to live it how you want to live it. My personal choice is that I don't need that to feel, you know, to be fulfilled in what I'm doing and to mm -hmm. feel, you know, this music gets me high. Yeah. Performing gets me high. Cutting a record, writing a verse, that's what gets me high now. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I just don't need it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. How do you think your music has changed from the very first songs with your $300 microphone? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Um, it's changed dramatically. Like, drastically. It, uh... It's, it's matured so much. It went from just kind of just whatever sounded good and like rhyming to like mm -hmm. me being more vulnerable. Yeah. Like, my, my EP that's coming out, and I don't know... I don't know if I've released the name yet, but my e my upcoming EP is like mm -hmm. I'm. This is the first time I'm being really vulnerable, and really I have a song called Here, and it's like really special to me because it's me just talking about me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? What I've been through in the past year, how my opinions on on how I feel about certain subjects, and I'm just being very open, very transparent, and that to me is like a huge step with my art and like maturity you know because mm -hmm. not only am I progressing as a person and a human and, and becoming a better person and maturing in my actual life but I'm maturing with my art as well mm -hmm. and that to me is like the best feeling in the world yeah you know because like you, you I'm proud of myself for becoming a better person and and growing and maturing but being able to do that with my art and with something that I love and having my art mature with me mm -hmm. is like it's so sick to me. It's like yeah. mind blowing. It's so dope. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's so dope. And then you also had like kind of difficulties like trusting the wrong people. How do you know now to trust the right people? Um, I just go with my gut. Mm -hmm. Now it's like if I get that and I'm sober, so I have a very like clear mm. sense. I have so much clarity that it's like, oh, watch the step. This Ooh. is crazy. Um, <laughs> I have just so much clarity now mm -hmm. that it's like if I don't have a good feeling about somebody or I feel they're kind of like shysty or, or I don't need them in my life or they're mm -hmm. making me, they're draining me and I'm like physically and emotionally drained and don't feel good around them, then I, it's not that, it's not that I don't trust them, it's just that I won't have them in my life, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. it's like I won't, it's, there's no, people don't give you, I guess people will give you a reason to not trust them, but I don't let it get that far anymore. Yeah. If I don't have that good feeling about you, I'm not going to like in, invest my time with you or my trust in you because it's like, why would I? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Other than that, what would you say have been your like biggest challenges? 
my biggest challenges other than that or is that mostly that's it okay. yeah you, yeah. you guys yeah that was my challenges <laughs> i don't have really anything else yeah i mean maybe sometimes you know eating like bad food or something like you know eating <laughs> yeah. fast food or like taco bell or something like that yeah yeah this is a, yeah if you had like unlimited budget what would you see your like live sets to be like your performances oh my if i had unlimited budgets i would have fireworks i would have 12 <laughs> drummers i would have a full chorus line dancing like oh it would be crazy i'd have lights coming out of everywhere i, I saw i saw in a, in, I like a, a endless amount of lights mm -hmm. we would drain the city there would be there would be no oh power God. left there would be no power left in, what, would in whatever city yeah it would be no you'd have to be it would be blacked out everywhere else besides my I concert if you want light you want to do homework you want light you come to my concert you come to my show yeah I would have, yeah, and I would have, I saw an interview where uh, Chance was talking about how Kanye was trying to figure out how to make him disappear on stage. Like, I want to oh do that. Gosh. I want to disappear on stage. Like, I yeah. want to do all that. I'm trying to do all that. Wardrobe changes, like, in the middle, like, rip a whole outfit off oh and then just God. be another outfit on. Like, just. <laughs> Actually, you could kind of do that right now. I know, right? Like I could so just rip it off. Like I got layers. layers. Right I know. Out. Don't get it fooled. It's 80 degrees out in fucking in L.A. It's hot. This is for fashion. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. What do you want to be remembered for? What do I want to be remembered for? I want to be remembered for for the kid that used the man, I should say the man that used his downfall and used his you know the the rough times that he was going through and his struggles and turned it around and used it to inspire people. Mm -hmm. I want to be known as the kid that used to be the bad influence turned good influence. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People that used to follow me because I was doing something in a negative light and now I'm the I'm the guy that people want their kids around. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I want to be remembered for the person that turned his life around and used it to influence other people. I want to be remembered for for my music doing that, mm -hmm. for helping people. I want to be remembered for being a philanthropist, yeah. you know, building houses for people in, in in Haiti or wherever, you know, wherever it needs in Houston. Like, mm -hmm. I want to be that. I want to be remembered as that. I want to be remembered as Derek, the artist, the philanthropist, the model, the <laughs> TV producer, the music yeah. producer. I want to be remembered for all that. But, like, first and foremost, I do want to be remembered for turning my life around and using that to influence other people yeah i love that so much thank you so much that's really of awesome of course thank yeah. you bye guys